You want to turn a SQL database into a no-code platform? NoCodeDB is made for you. Hi, let's discover NoCodeDB, a free open source alternative to Airtable. It transforms a database into a smart spreadsheet and much more. Let's see their website. They define themselves as an open source alternative to Airtable. They show us that without code, you can have a lot of views like grid view, gallery view, form view, but you can also create your own views using code. And for all those views, you have sort, filters, and you can work with them without coding anything. You can invite collaborators and define them user roles with specific permissions. Inside, there is an app store with built-in integrations, so you can automate using NoCodeDB directly. Your data is accessible via a REST API, and it automatically generates a Swagger documentation. Technically, it's host on GitHub. There are more than 31 stars, which means it's a very appreciated open source project. It also relies on Vue. When you go to their GitHub page, you can see they are presenting the project and all the, the setup phase. One thing I like is this part, which is named screenshots, where they present the project. But there are also features with a coming soon flags, which means you know what is going to be developed. If you go to their website, there is a button which is named Join NoCodeDB Cloud, which leads to a Google form. Their private beta cloud is not ready yet, but it's coming soon. So currently you have two options. Either you deploy it yourself using Docker, or you can use LST, your fully managed service. Let's start by setting our NoCodeDB instance. Go on ls.io, login, then create a new service. Search for NoCodeDB, select, and select the server you need, but for demo purpose, I will take the default one, next, and next. Now we will receive an email as soon as our instance is ready. Okay, I just received an email telling me that my instance is ready. Let's go to it. So it's asking me to sign up, so I'm creating my account. I arrive here with a project list, for the moment it's empty. Before creating our first project, let's go to the right panel and see what they have. They have a documentation, which is very rich. It's really important when you choose a project that it comes with a high quality documentation. And here it's really the case. It comes from the installation, but also the product features. They also have a demo page, which leads to video they made on their YouTube channel to describe some features. There are short videos, but interesting ones. And inside the product section, you have a lot of high quality information if you want to go deeper. But let's have a look together of what NoCodeDB is. We'll start by creating a project. We will just make a task manager app. Hit create. Once the project is created, you can have access to users management. So you can invite team members and work together and define them roles. You can also create your API tokens for later when you want to use backend code or frontend code to call your NoCodeDB databases. So let's start by creating our first table. Let's name it tasks. And by default, it always comes with a title. And we will add some columns to our tasks. Let's add a column name status. You have a lot of ready to use types. The one which we will want to use is single select, where we can add options. So we have to do, in progress, and done. Let's save. So we can add a default task like do the groceries. And it's a to do because we need to do it. Here I had to set up manually to be in to do. But once we create a task, we want it to be by default in to do state. So what we can do is go to edit, show more. You have relational database information, so we will skip them for now. You have the tag inside the database, but for single select, you can't change it because it wouldn't work. But you can define a default value, and here we will do a to-do. 
So when we will add a new row to the laundry, it automatically set the status. Now we will have a look at another kind of field, which is a relation to another table, but we don't have yet. So let's create a new table. Let's name it members. We won't name it title, but full name. And let's add another field we will call photo. Here you can have attachment, so it's perfect to upload files. Add a new row, I will add myself. And add files. I add my picture. So, okay, we can add other members, but it's just for demonstration. So let's go back to tasks. Okay, so now let's link our task to a member. So let's create a column named member, link to another record. Let's select many to many because we can have multiple tasks for multiple members. We will select the table members and save. Now we can link it to a member. And if we go to members, you can see all the tasks associated to our user. Let's, let's decide our laundry is done. We can add some filter to say we only want the task where the status is equal to to do. So you can have a view of all the tasks you have to do, but you can create another view to store this filter. So let's get rid of it. You can also sort to see um, the more recent one or to have the to do first. But here you can just do it all like alpha alphabetically. So T is before D. You can use decreasing order or you can add number before to, to hack the system. You have this default table view, which looks like a smart spreadsheet, but you can use other kind of views. Here, we can use Kanban, save, and you can, by default, it created on status, but you can select the column on which it will be grouped. But here it's what interests us. So you can move directly and it will update the status appropriately. So it's very useful, especially for a to-do list. And in members, what will be useful will be to create a gallery. So you can see all the team members in an appropriate way. For tasks, let's say you want to add tasks on your phone, you can create a form with all the fields and you will submit it and it will appear in your task list. And you can share specific views like only the form you will say share view and share only this view to people, but you will have access to all the tasks. So it's very handy. Another really powerful feature is if you go to tasks here, there is something named webhooks. So you can create a webhook with a name and you define that after an insert or an update or a delete of a new row in your table, it will call a webhook with the data and you can code some logic into it and have a really powerful application. Still about API, you have API snippets, which are here in different languages. Let's say we want node, we can select the library we use to do API call. So by default, it's Axios and we copy and it directly get us the list of tasks. This is for this specific table. But if you want to go further, it automatically generates a REST API. So you have to go to your project task manager here, go to Swagger REST API, and you have a list of all API calls you can make to interact with your database. Here it defines every single field with details on how to use it and what they are. Still on your project, you can go to team and settings where you can add users and manage your tokens. But there is also the app store, which are the built-in integrations you can use on your project. 
which allows you to make some automations directly in NoCodeDB. Conclusion, it works well, it looks good and it's supported by an open source community with a vision on what is coming next. And personally, I think it's mature enough to be used on real projects. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this overview of NoCodeDB. Please hit the like button as it helps us to gain visibility on YouTube. If it's not already the case and you want to see more alternative to videos, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks again, bye bye.